law 578 law of evidence 2 character evidence lecture 2 assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh today we are going to continue with discussion on character evidence in our first video i have discussed with you the meaning of character evidence and the use of character evidence in civil cases now let's look at the topic on character evidence in criminal cases now, when you talk about character evidence in criminal cases, the provision that you are going to look at will be the one under Section 53 and Section 54 of the Evidence Act. Okay, now let's look at character evidence in criminal case. Now, when you talk about criminal cases, yeah, matters relating to character evidence, you have to distinguish your discussion on character evidence into two two. Yeah, into two kind of situation. The first one is discussion relating to good character evidence and the other one will be relates to bad character evidence. Now, basically when you talk about character evidence, there are two kinds. One is good character in which you are telling the world that you are a good person, you are very generous, you like to donate, that is good character evidence. As opposed to bad character evidence, the fact that you like to be drunk, the, la the fact that you are very stingy, that can be, can be categorized as bad character evidence. So discussion on good character evidence is actually within the scope of Section 53 of the Evidence Act. Now when you refer to Section 53 of the Evidence Act, in criminal cases, previous good character relevant. In criminal proceedings, the fact that the person accused is of a good character is relevant. Now, Section 53 provides for good character evidence and Section 53 only applies in criminal cases, okay? Now, the general rule under Section 53 is that the moment you talk about good character evidence, good character evidence is always relevant in criminal proceedings, right? Why is that so? Why? is because the rationale is because you have this presumption of innocence Right, you have presumption of innocence whereby you are supposed to be innocent until proven guilty and it was stated that if you are a person who has been living in good in good moral environment there will be unlikely that you are going to commit a crime right so because of that right this is actually provided for in the case of munusami sundar raj which confirmed the decision of habib muhammad which says that good character may indicate innocence or criminality right so if you reflect that if you refer to the powerpoint here when you talk about good character evidence it is general role uh, uh, general rule relevant because a person who has led a morally sound and lawful existence is less likely to have committed a crime compared to someone that is used to be behaving badly so that is actually why the rationale to the use of good character evidence okay now when you talk about good character evidence here say for example you have in criminal case you have here an accused person being charged for perhaps bribery so the issue here can he give evidence of his good character right this is reflected in the case of Said Ismail right Said Ismail is a person who has been charged for corruption and he is trying to give evidence of his good behavior and he says that i have good educational background i have good administrative experience there were no complaint made against him so i am giving evidence of good character now the law says that if the accused here want to give evidence of his good character he must tender proof to show that he is of good character so meaning to say he must give evidence of his good character positive evidence has to be tendered to show of his good character how will this be so since he says that i am a person of good reputation i am of good educational background so perhaps you produce you put your documentary evidence reflecting on your uh, your education maybe someone can testify reflecting that you are a very good leader and there were no complaint made against you so it has to be tendered by way of proof so meaning to say evidence has to be tendered remember when we talk about evidence tendered it can be by the form of document or it can be by the form of 
an individual giving oral evidence. Yeah. So when the moment you are saying that you are a good person, you are bringing evidence of good character, then you have to prove that in court. Yeah. Remember, good character evidence here. So uh, now let's look at uh, your PowerPoint here. So you have here the case of Munusami. Uh, Munusami. You also have here the case of Said Ismail. So the case of Said Ismail basically says that you have to bring evidence to show that you are a good character. And the case of Munusami Sundah here also says that evidence of good character and general disposition cannot outweigh positive evidence with regards to guilt of the person. Now, what does this mean? It means that if the accused person here is being charged for bribery, right? So you have the prosecutor here is giving evidence to prove that he, will, he, will, he has committed bribery. And the prosecutor here has standard evidence to show that he committed bribery. So you may have evidence document to show that he has, uh, the money has been deposited into his account. You have uh, an eyewitness, prosecution witness that says that I gave the money to him. All this evidence that is produced by the prosecutor that can establish guilt, right? They can establish guilt. Then the moment you have this, this cannot be overridden by evidence of good character. It means that the moment you have evidence to show that he is guilty, good character evidence cannot be used to override the guilty, the guilty outcome. Yeah. So that is what it meant by that position just now. Okay. Now when you talk about this position, right? This is what we are talking about just now. So you're talking about evidence of good character here. Oops, evidence of good character here. Uh, evidence of good character here uh, uh, will be relevant yeah if it is um, if it is reflecting on uh, it, it meaning to say that uh, other evidence once it's proven cannot be rendered or thrown away by virtue of good character evidence now the third one will be when you have mitigation and uh, a good character evidence will be very very much relevant when you are talking about mitigation now, if you recall the position when you talk about uh, when you talk about last time criminal trial so when you talk about criminal trial remember you have at a prosecution stage right the prosecution has to bring all the witnesses there will be the process of examination in chief by the prosecutor there will be cross-examination by the defense and re-examination and you have the court evaluated it remember at the prosecution stage the evaluation is at the standard of prima facie and at the end of the case the court will come to decision whether you are if facts are proved or if the facts are disproved if facts are proved meaning to say that prima facie has been proven and you go to the next stage basically at the defense stage you have now the defense calling the witnesses there will be process of examination in chief cross and re-examination the court again do the evaluation and this time at the standard of beyond reasonable doubt. Remember, trial only completed, if you're talking about criminal cases, trial only completed after this process have been true. You must have matter settled at the prosecution stage and matter settled at the defense stage. The moment uh, upon evaluation beyond reasonable doubt found that the accused person is liable or guilty beyond reasonable doubt, so if you are guilty, therefore you will get conviction. The moment this is done, only the issues of sentencing and mitigation come into picture. Right? Now, sentencing and mitigation is not part of trial. Now, when you talk about the process of sentencing and mitigation, here, yes, character evidence will be relevant in sentencing and mitigation. Now, in one case, it was stated that if you have previous conviction, previous conviction here can be a factor that may increase your sentencing. Right? If you have been committing a crime all this while, so this could be an evidence to increase, that could be an evidence that can be used to increase your, your sentences. And, Katakala, you have another example. You have been pleading guilty. Of course, if there's pleading guilty, the, the process here will not run. So if you plead guilty and plead guilty, basically an example of good character 
and there have been cases to say that it can be used to mitigate right and sometimes yeah sometimes in another case uh, factors that you your whether you are whether you regret to what happened uh, to that situation so uh, in in some cases right if you are tendering good character evidence it can be basically used to reduce your sentence you have that in the case of kuban hawk you also have that in the case of Xia ui chiu because in the case of chia uh, chia ui xiu uh, there will be issues of uh, misrepresentation uh, done by the person relating to the credit of this particular uh, of a company and basically uh, he was initially uh, given uh, nine months but the sentence was reduced to three months because of because him have because he has unblemished record or contribution in society so he has been contributing to the society but he has made some mistake now so the court says that the fact that he stays in the prison only for three months that is severe enough for him so it doesn't matter you don't have to put him in jail for so long for so long three months is enough so this is where the clang of prison gates and principal concept sorry the clang of prison gates concept was used to say that in some cases people regretted it even though you put him in jail for three months he repented so it's okay to keep him in jail for a shorter time this is where you are looking at his character whether he is that kind of person that have that character all right so that is actually the position of good character evidence yeah so good character evidence in our discussion here basically uh, can be tended as relevant and admissible but in very limited situation now how about bad character evidence right how about bad character evidence now you look at here in our previous uh, uh, in our slide so basically when you talk about criminal cases yeah we have been discussed just now good character evidence we have general rule under section 53 good character evidence is relevant However, when you talk about bad character evidence, now when you talk about bad character evidence, now the law that is applicable will be the one under section 54. Now let's look at bad character evidence. Let's look at section 54. Now, previous bad character not relevant except in reply. Subsection 1. In criminal proceedings, the fact that the accused person has a bad character is relevant. Now, section 51, subsection 1 here, the first part of section 51, subsection 1 here provides you with the general rule relating to bad character evidence. Whereby in this provision, bad character evidence is generally not relevant to be tended as evidence in the court. Remember, I have discussed with you in the beginning the rationale why you cannot bring bad character evidence. Because you are, not, you are not concerned about the man, you are concerned with the crime that he committed. The rationale here is that yeah, a person may be of bad character, but he may not be committing a crime. So because of that rationale, and the rationale is basically grounded on public policy and fairness, because of this, uh, because of this rationale, the law says that bad character evidence shouldn't be relevant to be tended as evidence in the court. So this general rule here provides you with a shield. The moment you have an accused person being charged in court, he will use the protection under section 54, subsection 1, the general rule, to become the shield yeah, of his, of his bad character. Okay? So you can have that in the case of Wu Zihar. So basically, Based on the case of R and Whitmore, based on the case of Wong Siha, you find that bad character evidence here cannot be tendered as evidence in the court. Basically, bad, uh, there will be a shield protecting the accused person against bad character. Now, this particular shield, however, can be broken. The shield can be broken in the sense that bad character evidence can be tendered as evidence against the accused person in the court in in four situations right in four situations you look at um, look at the notes here so this is a general rule you have that 
Basically, in the general rule, bad character evidence is not relevant. When an accused person, okay, in section 54, subsection 2 as well, it says that a person charged and called as a witness shall not be asked and if asked, shall not require to answer any question tending to show that he has committed or been convicted. So, so it means that section 51, there is a provision that provides you with the general rule. Section 52 also, the first part of section 52, subsection 2, also reflect that if you're an accused person and you are charged, you will not going to give evidence of your good character if it is asked against you and that is a protection given to you, right? So that is a protection against the accused person on bad character evidence. And the word charge under section 54, subsection 2 here is referring to you must have been charged and convicted. So you will not going to be asked by the prosecutor of your previous bad character or your previous conviction. They cannot ask you about that. So this is a protection given by the accused, given to the accused person by the law. Alright? Now, let's look at the incident. Alright, this would be the rationale. If you look at the notes here, this part would be the rationale as to the public policy. Now, under section 54, subsection 1, that provides you with the general rule, and section 52, subse sorry, section 54, subsection 2 here, I gave you the situation where the shields remain intact. There could have been an attempt to go against the protection, but it remains intact. Say, for example, you have the incidents in the case of Girdari Lal, where the accused person's character, the accused person character that was exposed by the fact that his photograph was shown together with his accused number. So he is an accused person. So he has, remember when an accused person be caught at the police station, photos were taken and his photo provides with him, on his photo there's an identification as a criminal here. What happened here is that when the photograph was shown to the victim or to the witness, it will not be relevant because there is an incident of his bad character. The photograph basically uh, recorded his bad character. And another one will be the case of Luke Soha, also reflecting of evidence of bad character. Yeah, the photograph there. Okay? Uh, then, alright. Uh, so, this will be the instances where protection is not broken. You have that as an example. Now, let's look at the incidents where shield can be broken. Shield can be broken yeah, if you have one of the four situations. So, this is what we are going to discuss today, yeah? The incident where shield can be broken. I'm sorry. Okay. So we are going to discuss the instances where shield can be broken under section 54 subsection. Uh, okay, under section 54. Now. Right. How can a character evidence be broken? The shield of against bad character be broken. The first one will be when we look at section 54. Section 54, subsection 1, the proviso. Now, if you read section 54, in criminal proceeding, the fact that the accused person has a bad character is irrelevant unless evidence has been given that he has a good character, in which case it becomes relevant. So you're talking about the proviso under section 51 here, 54, sorry, 54 subsection 1 here, is that there is a shield protecting you, but the moment you give evidence of your good character, right, you are opening up the other person to tender evidence of bad character. So that is the position. So the proviso says that the moment you give evidence of your good character, evidence of your bad character can be tendered as evidence in the court. So the shield will be broken the moment you give your good character evidence. Okay? Now this is actually provided for in the case of R. N. Winfield, whereby this particular person has been charged for assault, right? And he is calling witnesses, or uh, a witness has been called, and he asked this particular witness to give evidence of his good character. And the court says that 
The moment you call the person to give evidence of your good character, this may happen at the defense stage, the prosecutor can cross-examine the witness to concern, concerning his bad character evidence. Yeah? So the, the idea is that for under this provision, the moment you say something good about you, be careful because someone may give it may open up the cans of worm and the other person can uh, the other person can cross-examine you as to your bad character. Now remember this bad character evidence, sorry, the evidence of good character evidence must be elicited from the, the person. Yeah, by the defense, right? If the person voluntarily, if you have a witness here, is caused by the prosecutor and he voluntarily gives evidence of your good character, that will not going to break the shield of protection as accorded to you. Yeah? Remember, the shield is broken if you, the accused person, call the witness to give evidence of your good character. Or during the prosecution stage, the prosecution witness here is giving evidence in the court and the and the, uh, the lawyer for the defense here is asking or is actually uh, cross-examining you or cross-examining the witness on the bad character. That will be the first one. Yeah, the second situation where the shield can be broken is actually under section 52, subsection, sorry, section 54. Sorry. Yeah, under section 54, subsection 2, subsection A. Yeah, we are going to discuss this one. This is where if you look at section 54, subsection 2, subsection A, the proof that he has committed or has, or have, sorry, the proof that he has committed or been convicted of that other offence is admissible evidence to show that he is guilty of the offence wherein he is being charged. So this is a situation under section 54 later when I discuss with you, this is concerned with similar facts, evidence. The third situation where the shield can be broken will be under section 54, subsection 2, subsection B. He has personally or by his advocate asked questions of the witnesses of the, for, for the prosecution with a view to establish his own good character. So this is where you are trying to elicit good character evidence from the prosecution witness. Right? Or has given... Or has given... Or, Sorry, or has given evidence of his good character. So it's, there could possibly be three situations here. One is that you have prosecution witness, you elicited evidence of good character, or this is your, your witness, you are, this particular person is giving good character evidence. Or the third one is where, right? Or the nature of conduct of the defense is such as to involve imputation. So the third one will be the, the, the defendant's conduct is causing imputation against, he's making, casting imputation against the prosecutor or the prosecution witness. We're going to discuss that. And the last one under section 54, section 54, subsection 3, yeah, is will be where the accused person has given against any other person charged with the same offence. So you have an accused person here is giving evidence of bad character of a co-accused. So you have accused and co-accused situation. Right? So now, basically there are four instances where bad character evidence can be broken. Yeah? The one will be under, first one will be under section 54, subsection 1, the proviso. The second one will be under section 54, subsection 2A. The third one, section 54, subsection 2B. The fourth one will be under section 54, subsection uh, 2C. Right? Okay. And we will be discussing yeah, the incident of this brief.